I'm sure you've seen subscription boxes and stuff and you've looked at them and you've been like, I like food, maybe I should get one of them. And then you've really asked yourself, but is it any good? Why would I commit money to something if it's not gonna be good? And you've seen a lot of content creators reviewing things like that, but all of them have been paid for it, right? And I thought um, being unsponsored by any food related brand whatsoever, that we could do an honest review of Sakura Co. We've got a pamphlet that kind of tells us what's inside it and gives us a little idea of the theme. Let's enjoy traditional flavors of Japan together. That's what it says on the inside of the box. <laughs> and I'll tell you if, if you would like them, because I know another big thing is like dietary requirements. Like, can I eat this if I have certain dietary requirements? Sakura Co is pretty good for this because it has, um, it, it shows you in the pamphlets, the dietary requirements, vegetarian friendly, is that vegetarian friendly? You know, what does it have in it? All this sort of stuff. You get lots of little different treats. You get a tea, which is great. Biscuits. There's also a lot of information about how these foods are made and all that sort of fun stuff. So first in the book is tea. I love tea. As you all know, I'm a tea fiend, so I'm obviously going to be a little biased towards this. Um, so I'm going to go and make a cup of this sencha. So it's brewing now. Can you see the color? A little bit. Okay, while we're waiting for the tea to brew, let's have... These are momiji and chestnut wagashi, which is a traditional Japanese sweet that capture Kyoto's autumn beauty. If you uh, never want to try anything new ever in your entire life, these uh, boxes are not for you because it will, uh, it will challenge you and your flavor palette with stuff you've never tried before. So this one's the maple leaf one and this one's the other one. Cheers. The sugary sand texture on the outside makes me sad. Oh, this is a weird texture, a, a weird flavor. Mmm. It's very sweet. It's like a chewy jelly candy. It's nice. So it's got like, you. I don't know if you can see it. It's got like uh, crystallized sugar on the outside. So it's got that crunchy, like sandy texture on the outside, but the inside texture is really good. The other one is two types of bean paste. This one's much harder. It looks like this. Have a look. What do you reckon? Not bad. Cheers. Oh, weird. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. I like this one more. If you've ever had a mochi chat, this is like the inside of the mochi without the rice, uh, the rice cake on the outside. It's just like the inside filling of a mochi. It's it's quite tasty. Very interesting flavors. Here's my tea bag. Ooh, Chad, I love green tea. See, if you're a, if you're a Jap Japan enjoyer, this sweet box is gonna be like, listen, you're gonna love it. But if you've never experienced Japanese flavors, I feel like it's a good intro to it. It, it gets like some Japanese flavors across that you might not experience uh, in like Western countries otherwise. <sighs> oh, green tea is so like, so soothing to me. Mm. Lovely. Very nice. Adding the cold water was necessary, otherwise it would have gone bitter. Remember that when you're brewing green tea, you have to brew it at a lower temperature than black tea, otherwise it gets bitter and gross. All right, now it gets tricky because now I have to like go hunting for what the next thing in the book is, which is Soba Boro. Aha, here we go. Oh my God, there's so many. All right. Do you reckon these are gonna be savory or sweet? Oh, they're definitely savory. Oh, oh yes. Um, how do I describe these? Oh my God, these are like, like a wholesome cracker. If you've ever had soba noodles in uh, in a Japanese restaurant, the like brown, like wholesome tasting buckwheat ones, that's this, but in a cracker. Oh, interesting. Little bit of sugar on the outside. So tiny little bit sweet on the outside, but it's so, oh, it's so wholesome tasting. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, the aftertaste is kind of, it's not fishy. That's the wrong word. It's just not something that I'm used to. It's like the aftertaste you would get of eating a very whole wheat cracker. I, I'm still going to eat this whole bag. I would say six out of 10. Our next snack is Kyoto Arare that you've probably seen before. It's like variety Japanese crackers. I think it's these ones. This may have crab and shrimp. Look at that. So cute. No fishy smell at all. None. Let's try the seaweed wrapped one first. Oh, the seaweed stuck to the roof of my mouth. Ah, oh, unpleasant. Ah, unpleasant. Okay, I got it off and now it's fine. There's only one with the seaweed in it. That's okay. This one's got sugar all over it. Oh, and chili. Sweet and spicy. Mmm, that one's nice. These ones, the ones that look like this, 
Always my favorite cracker in the box. Like sweet soy sauce. No, savory soy sauce. Oh yeah. This is the best one. This is the best one in the box. You would never think that a simple rice cake could bring you so much joy, but let me tell you, let me tell you, you are wrong. Next is the fried Jinko nuts. Oh, you get two of these. They come in like little, little triangular containers. All right, let's see. Oh my God, they smell exactly like Play-Doh. Oh, that brings me back to being a child and definitely not eating Play-Doh. I definitely didn't eat Play-Doh as a child. I would never do that. Here it is. It's a nut. Let's eat that nut. Oh, I, I get the bitterness. I'm not sure about these. This might be too bitter for my palate. Let me have another one. The first one was not good. The second one was really, really good. Maybe I just got a bad nut. Let me try a third one. If you're not sure and you're a scientist, you always test at least three times minimum. So let's do a third one. I take it back. I take it back. I think that was a control, that was a bad control nut. There is definitely a little bit of bitterness, but the overall taste is really pleasant. That's a, that's a pretty good nut. Would eat that nut again. Next, we're going Oso de Furi Soybean Okaki. I'm not gonna lie to you. Off the bat, does not look appetizing. Oh, there's two. All right, there's a broken one. I'll, I'll have that one. All right, let's, uh, let's have a, have a look. Ooh, it smells almost peanut buttery. It smells wholesome. This is the soybean okaki. Oh, crumbly. Mmm, wholesome. The, the flavor of this is comforting, is what I would say. It, it's comforting, it's wholesome. It's a very mild flavor. It reminds me of sitting by a, a fireplace or snuggled up in bed watching late night TV and eating corn chips. This is like... Mm. I should note as well that in this box, it's not just the snack. I took it out already, but you also get, um, let me go get it. It's not just the snack box. You also get like a little, uh, a little Japanese like trinket as well. And the trinket that we got this time is a really pretty little like tea mug, which is cute, right? Really pleasant sounding as well. Perfect for exactly one half of a micromad serving of tea. So yeah, you get every month you get something different as well. Like you might get a cup one month or like a little a little plate another another month, or some months you get like a fan or something. Okay, next we've got the matcha cream roll cookie. That sounds good. Where is it? It must be this one. This is not that one. Hang on. This is something that's on the same page. The matcha chocolate crunch. So this is matcha and chocolate. You get two of these. Here's what it looks like. Surely this is a dub. Surely this is a dub. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that is a win. That is a winner winner. Chicken dinner. Oh my God, that is so nice. Okay, this is the matcha cream roll cookie that I was, I, I talked about before that I didn't have. Ho ho, look at that. Look at that. Okay, proportion of roll on the outside to cream on the inside. That looks great. Let's have a try. A tragic announcement. It's hollow. Oh, hollow all the way through. Boo! Boo! It is tasty though. It's not as tasty as the matcha chocolate crunch. That was better. Now I gotta get a spoon because the next one is this matcha pudding. So this is the matcha pudding. There's definitely a color discrepancy, <laughs> but I mean, obvious, of course there is. This is, this is, it's full of preservatives, you know, to get it this far. Ooh, it was very soft. Oh, well, let's try it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, you think it, it's like creamy. It looked really gross texturally. It looked like it was going to be more of a jello, jelly type thing, but it's wet. It's more of like a creme, uh, creme caramel. It's more of a, a panna cotta texture. Mmm. Oh, that's delightful. It's like a little bit of like a peachy flavor as well. Looking like this, I did not expect this to taste good at all, but the texture is so good. I'm going to finish this. All right, moving on to some more crackers we've or and stuff. We've got the yuzu doriyaki. It's a it's a really good entry level snack. It's like two it's like two pancakes sandwiched together with a with a um a, a, a paste of some description. Ooh. 
Ooh! Oh! So yuzu is like a, a, a Japanese citrus, um, and the yuzu flavor appears to be in the pancake instead of in the flavor on the inside, but let's try it. It's a little dry. Mmm. The like lemony, citrusy flavor is way less intense than you'd anticipate. There's what the paste looks like on the inside. And the paste is really smooth. Oh my God, this is really tasty. I'm gonna have to like fold this over as well. It tastes like the texture is very much like this as well. The texture is quite thick and dense. Next, we've got Niki Yatsuhashi. A cherished Kyoto del delicacy has a delightful crisp texture and graceful cinnamon flavor. Ooh, cinnamon. These definitely look like they're gonna taste like a Christmas cookie. This is what they look like. You can see the curved shape in there. If these don't taste like a Christmas cookie, I might be a little disappointed. All right. Ooh, hold up. You could build it. They do look like roof tiles. Apparently they're designed to look like a Japanese harp called a koto. Oh, chat, hang on. Have you ever hated uh, Christmas cookies because they don't taste like big red chewing gum? This might be for you. Ooh, crunchy. Oh, too crunchy. Oh, 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 oh. If you're not careful eating these, it will hurt you. Oh no, this is, mm. oh. It tastes festive. It's like hurt your mouth if it splinters incorrectly levels of crunchy, but the flavor, it's quite cinnamon. Oh, ow. <laughs> Look at that point there. That, you could stab someone with this cookie. The flavor on that is quite intense. If you're not a cinnamon fan, you would hate it. This is something that I do like about the Sakura Co boxes is they don't just give you like one type of, of snack over and over and over and over again. They give you like a lot of different variety. Next, we're gonna try the Kitsune Senbei, which is here. We got a little Kitsune. Oh, this has that same food ASMR texture. Doesn't that sound like it's made of like porcelain or something? So this is wheat. Very crispy. Mmm. Oh, I know this texture. Hang on, I bit his ear off, he can't hear. He's gonna be deaf in a second. What is this? What does this taste like? This is weird. Imagine like a Melba toast, but flatter. It's also, it's giving fortune cookie. It's fortune cookie, fortune cookie. This is a, a giant flat fortune cookie. Exactly like that. It's just like the other one, except not cinnamon flavored. If you like fortune cookies, you'll love this specific cracker. Okay. Okay. Is this our last one? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, sweet potato pie. Luxious sweet potato paste filling delicately enveloped in several layers of flaky puff pastry. Wow, that looks delicious. Look at that. Oh my God. Not fish like the picture would indicate. Babe, that's a sweet potato. No, the texture of this is more like, um, oh, it's really flaky on the inside. The texture of this is much more like a pie, just the top of the pie. Do you see what I mean? Let's have a, have a taste of the sweet potato pie. It's very dry. It will be really good warmed up. Mm. Heat it up, this will be delicious. But cold, it's very dry. Very tasty, very sweet. It's like an apple pie top, but sweet potato. Pretty good. Very filling. Although to be fair, I've already had a lot of snacks. Well, okay. So let's try and do a rating, a fair rating. You get in this box, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 different types of snacks. But of those different types of snacks, of these cookies, you get a whole bag. Of a bunch of them, you only get one. You get two of the teas. You get two of the packets of these biscuits. You get two of the things of the, of the, the Jinko nuts. You get two of the white chocolate matcha and you get two of these like uh, the soybean cake. So there's a couple that you get double ups on and most of them are pretty decent, if not full size. So pretty decent. The Sakura, the Sakura Co boss costs $37.50 for one month. If you're only getting one month and no repeating subscription. So $37.50 divided by, what's that, 14? Ind individual snacks. So you're paying $2.60. 70-ish per snack, and that's not including the duplicates. Because there's duplicates, it brings it down to, I think about $2 per snack. And that also doesn't include, I'm just going price by snack, that also doesn't include the cute little like extra thing that you get in the box. Yes, it also does not include shipping. I will give you that. In the micromads, is it worth it financially category? Honestly, I think it is. Honestly, I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good deal financially. Considering you're not, you don't live in Japan, probably if you're 
watching this, you're interested in Japanese snacks, which would be a struggle for you to get elsewhere. If you eat one of these every day, like one of the whole, a whole one of the snacks every day, it'll last you, including the duplicates, um, 18 days, uh, not including the tea. If you're really into that kind of thing, absolutely. If you're like, listen, if the purpose of buying the Sakura Co box is just to get the most amount of snacks for the least amount of money, obviously it's not worth it. Like, obviously just go and buy a giant bag of Doritos, like. So if, yeah, if there's a specific month that, that calls out to you, um, then I think, yeah, like, sure, it's uh, it's absolutely worth it. So that is my uh, honest review of Sakura Co. If you would like to see me honestly review another snack box, let me know. I'll be honest. You know I don't have a poker face. I can't lie to you if something tastes disgusting.